Hi everyone, Who's a, who of you have uh, ever run OpenWRT on your Linksys machines? Oh, well, me of course. Yeah, so um, you're going to meet one of the uh, OpenWRT developers, so maybe you want to express some thanks, uh, some, some thanks for this. Yeah, yeah, right. Express some gratitude, that was the word I was looking for. So anyway, from Zagreb, here is Luka uh, Parkov, who's going to talk about, as you can see, the ISP's black boxes. Thank you. Uh, hi, uh, welcome to ISP's black box presentation. Uh, as you might know, ISPs have many black boxes. I'm going to talk uh, about one of them today. So it will be about protocol uh, CWMP. So first we will cover some theory and uh, then I will tell you about the software that we have made. <laughs> so I like to hack embedded devices and then I am one of the OpenWRT developers. Uh, so, CWMP, um, it was originally uh, named, uh, it was originally started uh, on DSL forum in 1994. Uh, now it's renamed to Broadband Forum. Uh, it has around 300 members, mostly uh, equipment vendors and uh, ISPs. Uh, this talk is about CWMP. Uh, this, this is the protocol for um, remote management of CPs, uh, aka uh, your home routers. So, uh, let's first cover a few terms. Uh, we have CPE, that's customer premises equipment, your home router. Uh, CWMP is uh, CP1 management protocol. Uh, ACS is the auto configuration server. So CP is the CWMP client and ACS is CWMP server. And uh, I don't know if you are familiar with the term uh, provisioning. It's uh, pro uh, the process of CP configuration. So why? First question. Um, it's easy if you need to manage one, two, ten, maybe hundred devices, but how do you manage 10,000, 100,000, or 1 million or more? Uh, this is the problems that um, ISPs have to solve. Also, uh, maybe you could do it on some hackish way uh, if you have only one vendor, but what about when you have many vendors and a uh, situation when, where uh, each, of, each of them has uh, their own protocol? Also. Uh, what, when you are ISP, uh, you want to uh, give a certain level, uh, you want to, um, give uh, information to uh, each ser uh, service levels. So for first service level, the call center, you want them, for example, to only view the wireless configuration and to be only uh, to be able to only change that for the second level you want to give them more more uh, information more more access and so on so this is why uh, it's good to have protocol like cwmp because um, you force the vendors to to use the same thing so questions for audience um, uh, can you replace your CP? I'm guessing that most of you have internet at home, right? Who has internet at home? <laughs> <laughs> so, who of you has a CP that was provided by ISP? Okay, great. So, do you have credentials for this uh, CP? For example, how do you connect to the PPP or if you have CP? <coughs> Do you have credentials for this? Okay. Okay, some of you have. Uh, did you hack it? Or uh, did, did ISP provide this information 
so you can uh, manually enter data in the CP. Those of you who raised hands earlier. So you, you, ISP gave you this information, right? Okay. Uh, those of you who don't have this information, uh, when ISP connects new user, uh, do they just need to plug the CP into the network and everything works out of the box? Okay, I see a few hands. Okay, so if if you cannot replace your CP and uh, provisioning the happens automatically, then your ISP is using something like CWMP, most likely CWMP. Okay, so what is CWMP? It's um, bidirectional uh, SOAP HTTP protocol. All the communication is um, done in uh, XML. Um, there, uh, this TR, this is a technical report. Okay, so there are, uh, there are around uh, 20 technical reports. Um, some of them um, are the um, some of them contain data from uh, others, but uh, most, mo most, most of them are uh, different. Uh, there are a lot of objects at, and parameters. Um, yeah, so what are objects and parameters? Um, objects contain parameters. Um, Objects end with a dot. That is how you can easily recognize them. Um, and per, uh, in parameters uh, are stored values, and uh, you can view or change uh, the values. Uh, this object device management server. This is taken from uh, TR 181, but it's mostly the same like in TR 069. Uh, it's only called Internet Gateway Device Management Server. Um, this, this object contains uh, perimeter, parameters for um, ACS and for CWMP. Uh, we, I will cover this uh, in, in more details when I come to the demo. Okay. So, wh wh why do we use C CWMP? So, um, ISP can uh, reboot, factory reset, uh, flash new firmware, um, save and restore configuration. For example, uh, you can have CP from one vendor uh, and let's say it, it gets broken and uh, you connect totally different uh, CP and you can have uh, all the same uh, configuration for your wireless home network uh, provision back to this new CP, uh, uh, even though it's, it's from a different vendor. You can create or delete objects. For example, you can, you can um, add new PPP connection, uh, new wireless SSID. Um, you can uh, get or set parameter values, so uh, this is mostly used, used for provisioning credentials for, um, for uh, your SIP PPP uh, accounts. Uh, you can also get or set parameter attributes, for example, uh, there, is, uh, there are objects for your uh, external IP address, um, so you can um, send notifications to the ACS when one of them uh, changes. So things like that. So what you can actually do, you can uh, uh, provision PPP and SIP credentials. You can uh, change configurations for uh, DNS, DHCP. You can get or set uh, wireless settings, so keys, SSIDs. You can also um, uh, change routing uh, and firewall and QoS and many other things. But uh, in 99% of the cases, uh, you almost always just set PPP and SIP. 
Okay, so CP, that's a CWMP client. Okay. Um, CP always connects to the ACS, so uh, only then it can be provisioned. You cannot connect, you, when you connect to the CP, it connects back to the ACS. So if you are going to do some security research, this is something you should know. Uh, CP can connect on various events, uh, on events like uh, reboot, factory reset, uh, also on, you can set periodic inform interval, uh, or after receiving a connection request from the ACS. Um, it connects uh, to the HTTP or HTTPS uh, URL. Uh, it also listens on certain port, uh, and the ACS usually has to um, uh, have username and password for this. Uh, object for this is uh, device device info. Uh, star is here because on TR. Uh, 069, it's Internet Gateway device. Uh, okay, we will also see this uh, uh, in the demo. Um, ACS. Uh, ACS can configure or get status from CP. So it's the central point which manages uh, all uh, CPs. Uh, it basically waits uh, until CP connects to the to the ACS, so for example, after factory reset, CP connects to the ACS, and then uh, then it gets provisioned. Uh, it, this ACS defined parameters are in object management server uh, object uh, in the device management server object. Uh, so how can you find uh, your uh, URL for your ACS. You could do it by the book, okay? So you can look at the TR069 specification on page 14. You can see that uh, ACS URL can be provided in DHCP option uh, 43. Uh, often the ISPs have um, separate interface for, for management. So if you use DSL, you will have to find your PVC settings for that one. Uh, or you can hack the CP. You can um, look into the firmware image or somehow enter the root shell and search for this uh, parameter. Okay, so uh, this is something that you will have to know uh, in order to, to, to access the ACS. So how does the communication uh, look like? Uh, this is the, the longest one, okay? It, it can be shorter, okay? So let's say the ACS wants to change or get a, uh, some perimeter. It will initiate uh, the connection request. Uh, after that, CP will contact the ACS uh, on its already configured uh, URL. Uh, ACS will reply with inform uh, message response. Then CP will send empty post message. In, in CWMP, empty post message means that the party that sends it uh, has nothing to, to say. So ACS can send empty reply or it can send the 204 uh, no content uh, message. Uh, okay, so ACS replies, for example, with set parameter uh, values request message. Okay, and after that, uh, CP sends set parameters value response. Uh, and if that is all that ACS wanted to do, uh, it will uh, reply without content. So either without content or it will send 204 uh, response. Okay. So this is this is um, how 
This is part of the XML message that uh, CP sends. Um, so you can see here, okay, uh, this part is uh, different for every vendor, okay. So you have a manu manufacturer field, o OI field, uh, product class, and serial number. So um, ACS uses this information to recognize uh, users or, and to recognize uh, which CP uh, is installed on the customer's location. Okay, so also CP uh, can send, or uh, no, can it sends uh, if, uh, reason why, why it uh, connected to the ACS. For example, bootstrap, it means uh, it is first, first connection to the ACS. There are uh, few, few, few events. Uh, for example, boot, uh, change, value, change value, uh, and so on. Okay, this is uh, the same message, but continued. Okay, uh, so uh, you have time. You have uh, retry count. Uh, retry count. Uh, it's it's a number. How many times uh, CP tried to connect to the ACS, but it failed. Uh, and on the next slide, I have a list of the parameters that are uh, needed for um, this uh, inform message. Uh, I did not find this into in uh, the documentation, but uh, looking at the captures and making it work with several ACS server, servers, uh, I found this uh, to be working all of, every time. Okay, so in. I, IGD is Internet Gateway Device. It wouldn't fit, so I, I made it shorter. Okay, so it has to send the uh, par parameter uh, manufacturer. Manufacturer OY is the first part of the MAC address. Uh, or also product class, serial number, hardware version, software version. Provisioning code and parameter key uh, can be empty values. And also it sends connection request uh, URL. Uh, it's uh, URL on the CPE uh, on which ACS connects when it uh, it wants uh, CPE to send uh, inform message, and also you have uh, external IP address. It's um, it's uh, it's parameter where where it's written the the IP address of usually the the this separate separate uh, interface for, uh, for uh, provisioning. Okay, so when ACS wants to set parameter, um, this is how, 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 we, how it's done. Okay, basically you just uh, put uh, in this area the name of the parameter and then uh, value you, uh, that you want to change. And then uh, also, also you can uh, put here as many as you want parameters, but all the, uh, all the parameters uh, must be set. I mean, um, this must be atomic. Either all of them are set or neither of them is. And if everything goes okay, uh, CP responds with message like this. It says, okay, everything is fine. Uh, forget parameter values. Uh, message looks like this. Uh, ACS puts the parameter or object uh, in this, this area. Uh, so if you put object in this message, uh, CP should send you a uh, list of all parameters that are contained in this object and if you have another object in this object uh, you will have uh, you will receive all the parameters from all the objects inside uh, this parameter okay uh, this is this is how the message uh, response look like to for the get parameter values okay so you put here the parameter name and this value so if you have put object in the previous message, uh, 
uh, you will have here a list of names and uh, values. Okay. So if you want to reboot, for example, uh, CPE, message looks like this, and for factory reset, it looks like this. Okay, so shortly that was uh, about the protocol. So what I have been doing, and uh, other guys, uh, is um, that we have been coding a client, and recently I have uh, coded a proxy, uh, for uh, proxy module for Nginx, and uh, I have started working on uh, free ACS NG, which is uh, ACS uh, server. Uh, all the code is uh, GPL uh, version 2 licensed, and you can get it on via Git. Uh, you can find more information on the web, web page. Okay, so lib free CWMP. It's a library where we put um, all, of, uh, all of the shared code. At the moment it's pretty small, but it will grow. Uh, it's around 200 lines of C. Uh, so free C CWMP. It's a CWMP client for OpenWRT, but you can use it uh, on other devices if you want. Uh, it uses... Uh, most, mostly the libraries from uh, OpenWRT, which uh, <laughs> are mostly for ROM NBD, is right here. Uh, okay, so we have uh, UC for uh, configuration, we have uh, Lib Ubox and uh, UBus for uh, RPC calls. Uh, I have also forked uh, mini XML library and called it micro XML. Uh, basically, I needed to do some, some code that uh, was not in this library and it took, took forever to get it merged, so I just forked it and uh, trimmed it a little bit. Okay, and you can use uh, curl or uh, the stream for HTTP related stuff. Uh, the stream is a bit smaller, but uh, it has some problems on uh, certain ACS servers which use uh, HTTPS. Okay, also you have to use uh, lib free CVMP and for the, for the, for the scripts part of the free CVMP uh, you have to use uh, H, uh, SH flex. Uh, free CVMP is um, divided in two parts. Okay, so you have free CWMP core which is coded in C. Okay. Uh, uh, it's in charge uh, of all the communication with uh, the ACS server and uh, it offloads all the parameter related stuff to the scripts because um, uh, if you want to provision for example asterisk uh, or some other SIP client uh, it will be, it will, you will need to do it differently because the configuration for this um, uh, software is not the same. So this is the easiest way to do it. If you have some other, let's say, SIP client, you just uh, write a simple script that, that will handle the SIP uh, username and SIP password and, and uh, set it correctly into a file and if you need you can uh, reboot reboot your client. Uh, free CWMP core uses uh, only a few parameters. Uh, for example, one of them is, uh, one of them are um, uh, the values for uh, contacting ACS after a certain amount of time. Okay, so uh, in free CWMP, you have number of scripts uh, that integrate uh, various uh, tier uh, uh, protocols, okay, let's call it that way. Um, there is still work to be done in this area. Uh, some of the work involves reworking uh, scripts that I have coded in the early beginnings 
but uh, now they are more more uh, involved um, evolved so uh, they could use some uh, refactoring um, free CWMP scripts uh, must be compatible with uh, default OpenWRT uh, BusyBox shell and uh, they, uh, the ones that are in Git repository uh, are modular and uh, you can extend them pre pretty easy to do whatever you want. Okay. Uh, so, mod CWMP, it's an um, Nginx proxy module uh, for CWMP protocol. Uh, it depends on Nginx, obviously. And uh, I have decided to use uh, lib XML2 because um, it has much more features, uh, but uh, we did not use that one in uh, free CVMP because it was uh, too big for embedded device. Okay, so you might be thinking, uh, why, why, why would you code the proxy? Well. Uh, you get out of the box uh, load balancing, so uh, you can you can have a farm of ACS servers in the in the back. Uh, also, you can use uh, it as a caching proxy. Um, for example, if you if you upgrade firmwares over the night, so no need to. Um, send traffic to the ACS if Nginx can handle it. Uh, also, there, there are some, I have called this protocol optimizer features. Uh, for example, most of the, most of the um, uh, ACSs require that uh, CP uh, sends username and password in HTTP request. Okay? But uh, most of them don't do it right away. So, we don't need to send this message to the ACS, but Nginx uh, sends a, a, a request for authentication. Uh, most interesting one is not published. Uh, it's called Message Inspector. So there is a reason why you should look into each XML uh, message that CP sends and um, and uh, reject it if, if you have to. Um, okay, so how, how does it work? Okay, uh, I'm using um, internal, internal redirection uh, or feature of uh, Nginx. So you basically define uh, approved and rejected location. So uh, in approved location, you just send tra traffic to the upstream uh, ACS server, and in rejected location, you want to log why why did the request from CP end end there, and uh, I also added code in Nginx, so it sends a factory reset to the CP. Uh, yeah, so if message is flagged as bad. It will be redirected to rejected location, otherwise it will be redirected to approved location. Okay. And the last thing, uh, software related, is the free ACS NG. Uh, it's auto configuration server. Uh, it's under development and uh, don't use it. Use it in uh, about a month or two. Uh, basically, it depends on uh, C, S, C, E, I, C, net string. It's the code from uh, Andre. Uh, it uses libevent, libxml2. It also uses uh, rabbitmqc, uc for configuration, and uh, libfree CWMP. Okay, so how does it actually work? So it's uh, S, C, E, I server. Uh, so we do not need to reinvent the wheel and code our own uh, HTTP server. Um, and the thing is that uh, when you are a, uh, ISP, you have your data in various databases and you cannot find two ISPs that are um, similar, okay? So in a way how they store their data internally 
and uh, you want to give ISP um, full control and uh, more flexibility uh, in a way that uh, they can provision their CP devices. Uh, so I have decided to use uh, advanced messaging queuing protocol uh, for this. Uh, what this basically is in a few words, um, you can define, define exchanges and uh, queues. Uh, you send messages to the exchange and it, based on the rules, uh, it can end up in uh, various queues. And uh, free ACSNG can send and pick, pick messages from the queue and the uh, backend in uh, ISP can uh, pick and send messages to the queue for the, for the SES. So at the moment, workflow uh, is something like this. Uh, free ACSNG receives connection, uh, connection uh, inform connection message from uh, CP and uh, sends the message to the backend uh, AMQP. Uh, provisioning backend then will pick up this message and uh, will do some magic, right? It will, uh, it will collect the data it needs to collect and uh, send it to another queue. Uh, then uh, free ACSNG will um, kick the CP, I mean it will um, order CP to connect back to the ACS. Uh, then CP connects to the ACS and uh, free ACSNG will see that there is message in the queue and it will provision the, the, the CP. Okay, so at the moment uh, free ACSNG, uh, if there is anything in the queue, it will only send a reboot command, otherwise it will re reply with uh, no content. Okay. So on my to-do list uh, is to define how these uh, exchanges and queues uh, should, should work together, what is find the best way uh, to do this. Uh, also called uh, basic provisioning backend in a few languages. Uh, this is also one of the reasons why, why I have this, uh, decided to go with uh, this design because um, why, why limit a customer or a ISP which, which language it should use if they want to use uh, Python, they, they, they should use Python. If they want to use uh, Java, they, they can use Java. Um, and also, uh, I need to code the connection uh, requester. Okay, so I think now is uh, time for a demo. Okay, so... Uh, I will first cover the uh, Nginx. Do you see this? Is this okay? Okay. Uh, okay, this is some generic stuff how to log. Okay. Uh, here is defined uh, upstream ACS server. In our case, it's um, uh, free ACSNG. It's, uh, it's listening on port 8000. On port 7000, uh, we have a proxy module, okay? Okay, uh, so it's uh, listening on this lo location, okay? So we have defined uh, approved and rejected uh, strings, okay? We also force uh, CP to only match uh, this uh, uh, root URI because of uh, you, you want to limit CP uh, in probing the, the ACS and this is how you do the uh, URI, uh, URI limiting and uh, you can also limit uh, arguments and uh, we are forcing the s uh, CP to send uh, username and password okay so if everything goes well in here, uh, it will be internally redirected to this location, okay? And then we just uh, pass this request back to the upstream proxy, this one, okay? 
And if it's uh, rejected, we will send uh, factory reset and we will log the full message from the CP. So later we can figure out uh, why, why it was rejected. Okay. And uh, on the server, uh, uh, another Nginx uh, server, okay, uh, is listening on uh, 8000 port. This is uh, SCG uh, client, okay, so we define some parameters, uh, okay, and we call SCG server, which is listening on port 9000, and this is actually uh, free ACSNG, okay. Uh, at the moment, there is uh, nothing much in the configuration file, okay? Uh, you just define on which address and port you need to listen on, define the stuff for uh, AMQP, okay? And uh, this I still need to finish and document properly, but at the moment it's uh, not used. Okay, so let's start the server. And we have free CWMP. Okay, so uh, we have few sections. Okay, so we have first this uh, local section. Okay, we define interface, management interface, uh, where it listens to. The uh, default port for CWMP is 7547. Okay, and uh, you can list events for, uh, for, uh, uh, for the reason of, uh, why CP is uh, con contacting uh, ACS. This bootstrap event is uh, deleted after the first successful uh, connection. Okay, so you also need to define uh, uh, stuff for the ACS. Also, you need to do the device configuration, uh, okay? And uh, this is how you list the scripts, okay? So, uh, you have a list location uh, where you load the, list, uh, the scripts, and then you have uh, generic functions for get and set, and I don't know, maybe, maybe some other stuff for uh, get, uh, functions for getting and setting um, uh, pa parameters, okay? And uh, you can also define uh, parameters, okay? So I have defined here uh, Internet Gateway Device Manager Server Periodic Inform Enabled to 1, okay? So <coughs> Periodic Inform is enabled and uh, set it also uh, to value 10, so every 10 seconds, free CWMP will connect to the ACS. Okay, so let's run it. Okay, it loads, it waits for a few seconds, connects to the ACS, and since nothing is in the queue, uh, we have received uh, empty messages uh, from the ACS. Okay, so now it goes again. Uh, you can also view what's happening in the in the log. Okay. Uh, now let's let's put something in the in the queue. One second. Okay. So now, when the C CWMP connects again. Okay. So it tried to reboot the machine, but I'm not running it at uh, it as a root, so it failed. And also. Uh, what we, what I want to use in free CWMP is to better better integration with uh, UBUS. Uh, it's right pronunciation, UBUS. Yeah, okay. Uh, so I want to pass all parameters from the from the uh, scripts and uh, also send parameters to the scripts via UBUS. So, for example. Uh, this is how we can trigger uh, inform requests for bootstrap. Okay, so we can see it in log. I'm going to stop it. Okay. Okay. So this is this line. So, yeah, that's it. So if, if you want to uh, get into it, uh, best way would be to uh, 
uh, either configure it with uh, uh, production ACS or or uh, use free ACS if you don't have an uh, alternative, okay? Uh, here is a list of links uh, of these projects. Uh, and the first one is the official broadband forum CWMP uh, documentation, okay? And uh, you can find us on Freenode, uh, free CWMP channel, or uh, you can send email to the mailing list, and this last one is my email if you want to get in touch with me. Yeah, okay, thank you. So, um, we have time for a couple of questions. Uh, please be considerate of the people who are on the streams out there and use the microphones there. And you can also just raise your hand and our uh, oh, nice um, uh, audio angels will bring the, the microphone to you. If you think you have to leave, please be considerate of the people who want to listen to the Q&A and try to be quiet and don't talk until you're outside. Thanks. So any questions? Hello. Uh, you mentioned that it is a bi-directional HTTP connection between the client and the ACS <laughs> server. So I wonder how do you manage to make it through the proxy? Is it in the reverse direction from the ACS server to the client? Does it also go through the proxy? Uh, it, goes, it, go it goes through the proxy. And how does the proxy know where to connect? Does the ACS server uh, tell him? I don't know. It's classic Nginx uh, proxy feature. In both directions? Yeah. So uh, ACS server sees uh, Nginx uh, proxy as a client and replies to the Nginx, and then Nginx, once it gets the response, sends to the original client, CP uh, response. But, but you mentioned that also the e ACS server can open the connection to the client. Aha, uh -huh, well, uh, that doesn't go through the proxy. Uh, you can connect uh, to the CP uh, as long as you have network connection to it, so that, that part does not go to, uh, through the proxy. Okay, thanks. Okay. First, first of all, thank you for your talk. And okay. uh, have you looked at real-life examples of this traffic? And do you know if there's a like? Uh, you mentioned that you can use HTTPS, but you don't have to. Um, how is that used in practice? Do well, ISPs use the security features, or is it always uh, open? Well, it depends on the ISP if they want to use HTTPS or not. Uh, some ISPs use it, some don't, and that this is why I know uh, for, that the stream does not work with, with HTTPS on some ACS servers. So, uh, does this answer your question? Yeah, and the, um, the ISP talking back to my uh, CPE, does okay. that always, or can that include HTTPS, or is that...? Yes, that... that uh, I'm not sure. Uh, I think it's uh, defined in documentation that CP can also have HTTPS, uh, but uh, you have one million CPs. How, how will you know all the certificates and everything, you know? And the uh, only thing that this does is uh, kicks the C CP to connect to the ACS. So you don't really need to, to have HTTPS uh, here. Thank you. Okay. Hi. Um, thanks as well for your work. I was wondering um, on, on the terms of having a CP. Um, nowadays, we're using DHCP to configure the lower levels, like IP. For CWMP... Uh, I, sorry, can you repeat, please? Um, nowadays, we're using a lot of, of DHCP to configure the CP to be able to talk um, in higher protocols. If I understood C, CWMP the right way, it's a layer 7 protocol. So you need to have the IP communication given before. Yes, yes. So, you, so the idea is still that you use DHCP on PPPoE connections, or um, will it replace DHCP and PPPoE over time? Uh, well, it depends on ISP, but uh, you have to have a uh, working IP connection either via DHCP or PPP. 
-hmm. and uh, your ACS will have to know somehow uh, which user is uh, which one, okay, to provision the correct uh, information. Mm -hmm. Okay, so so the whole workflow um, up to the, the connection of the CP itself will not change. No, no. Ah, this okay. is add-on to provision the credentials for the services for higher level services yes. than just yes. the internet connection. Okay, thank yes. you. Okay. Yes. Okay. The first one is. Is it possible to easily see what commands the ISP sends to my Fritz box? Uh, yes. Well, <laughs> I, I could do it. You mean how? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, you can do it. Uh, even though it uses uh, HTTPS, you can put uh, the. Uh, you can bridge. You could bridge. Uh, I'm talking when ACS is using, using HTTPS. Okay. Uh, you could bridge. Uh, bridge this uh, management interface to the to the nginx proxy okay and uh, that way filter out the https stuff to to actually see uh, what's happening in the messages okay and the second okay. question is how does the provisioning work if there are no configuration locally available no network connection initially there well, you have to have a network connection for, for this to work. Uh, this is why uh, free CWMP uh, connects, and it's defined in documentation that if your management IP changes, uh, you have to connect back to the ACS so it knows your new, new address. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, one more question. Uh, is it possible for commercial routers uh, to define what commands you, you want to the ISP to have or what, what access rights you want the uh, ISP sorry, to have? Sorry, can you, can you repeat, please? Um, is it possible for commercial routers to define what access rights you want the ISP to grant and what not? Uh, so can well, um, can you. Commercial, example, I'm not very happy with commercial TR069 clients, okay? Uh, they. They are very limited, and they, uh, uh, you can change everything that, that you should by the documentation. So they, they often give you um, parameters that you actually need, and you verify that they are working. And uh, in 99% uh, of the time, you use only that parameters. So when you in, uh, integrate new CP into the network, you, you verify parameters w which you need. And if it's working, then OK. Mm -hmm. But could it be a potential security breach that a, I don't know, um, a, a provider could change your Wi-Fi pa wi -Fi password and, or stuff like that? Well, it's defined in the standard. And OK, and so you. They can flush the box, you know. <laughs> yeah, okay, but so Wi-Fi settings. Um, uh, are not the, the 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 most harmful thing that you could do. Okay. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So thank you. Uh, thanks for your work. Okay. Um, I have another question. Um, how do you get to eavesdrop on the on a DSL connection if you have a CPE which only has a, a WAN port? Uh, which doesn't support Ethernet, but which only supports ADSL or VDSL or stuff like that. Uh, so how, you, how, how can you eavesdrop on such a connection without too expensive uh, hardware? You can put OpenWRT router and bridge this uh, management connection to your free CVMP running on your PC and uh, start sniffing and dumping traffic. Yes, but you you don't always have a router where you, you are able to flash a VRT or any other sensible uh, firmware on the device, and you you may uh, still want to to eavesdrop on the TR TR69 traffic or so, stuff like so that. So we hear the question: How would you eavesdrop on um, on um, some uh, production router? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, uh, you would have to position yourself somewhere in the in the network where where the data goes through. Okay. Yeah, but uh, my question was, are you aware of any cheap hardware which makes this possible? Because there's some, I don't know, some, some stuff like uh, an ADSL switch which have, has multi multiple ports where you can listen on them, which traffic goes through. 
uh, I, I'm not sure that I understand, but uh, if you can put, if you own the copper line, you can put your device there and you don't, you don't need to bother about the, this production device, okay? Yeah. Uh, you, you, you can just send inform request to the ACS with the spoofed data, yeah. okay? With the data, this uh, uh, OE uh, manufacturer software version, you just send <coughs> this data from the production CP and uh, uh, that's it. Okay. okay, so you just emulate it basically in software? Yes, yes. Okay. You can do all the configuration in, uh, you can change all the values you, you need yeah. in the free CVMP the, oh, okay. uh, config file. Okay, that's cool. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Well, nobody else has questions. I have, I have one left. Oh, there is one. Hi, um, any Hi. roadmap for where you see free CMP going? Uh, in the future, I think it will be used. It's a, it's a good protocol, but uh, you have to make it secure. I mean, uh, you have to filter some stuff from CPs, but it's a good protocol for that. Yeah, but beyond the TR69 protocol, I mean, a lot of us want to manage our own data and our own control on the box that the ISP gives us, but there's always the perspective of what the ISP has control of. But it would be nice that there's an interface that you know us like have access to a customer portal that can manage our own. What uh, data we, I'm know. sorry, I, I did not understand. Um, maybe I'll make it offline. It's more complicated. Okay. Okay. Right. Yeah. So, so I have I have a question. Um, now, what this boils down to is that the that the ISP can basically install any software on your router, which all your data goes through. Yes, now, this is, is obviously something that's extremely sexy for law enforcement or whatever spooks you have out there. Okay. Uh, are you aware of any um, activities that have already used this feature, so that they install Trojan horses on, on routers? So the, the law enforcement agencies, do you know about any, any kind of law for that kind of thing? Uh, I don't know. Uh, Software installing uh, and that stuff is defined in TR uh, 157, okay. And I don't know any production device that uh, is, is is has implemented this. Uh, you mean this this isn't actually implemented? So they don't they don't do remote updates yet. Uh, well, if you if you can position yourself in 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 this point in the network, then this this is not something you are interested in because you can get all this data from the standard TR-069 uh, parameters. So, for example, you can see uh, how many clients are in your LAN, uh, what what are their MAC addresses, okay, and stuff like that. So. Yeah, but but imagine I want to snoop on SSL connections. And I would okay. I would install I, I would want to install an S, an, an, an HTTPS proxy on okay. that box. I mean, this is something that I think law enforcement agencies would love to do, um, and I think that would be interesting. Uh, but you're not aware of anything like that. No, going but on. Uh, you have commercial um, sniffing yeah. boxes that uh, that you have to use. So uh, there is no need to put that into the CP. Any more questions? Okay, then let's thank our speaker again for thank making you. us aware of 